One of the more strange keywords you'll see in Java is this. But what exactly does this mean and what is it used for? In this video, we'll go over all the ways this can be used in Java so you'll know exactly when you need to use it and what it actually means when you do. My name's John, I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned with all of you in a clear and understandable way. I also have a full Java course available and a link down in the description if you're interested. Let's get right to it. All right, so the first way that the this keyword can be used in Java is to refer to the current object, meaning it refers to the object that the method you're currently in was called on. But what exactly does that mean and when might you want to do that? Let's take a look using a simple example. So I've got this dog class, right? All it has is two fields, a string name and an int age. You probably know that in general it's a good idea to make these fields private and then create getter and setter methods for being able to manipulate and read these values. So for example, if you wanted to make a setter method for this name variable, you probably have something like this, public void set name and that would take in the string name that you want to set the name to and then in the method you just want to of course set this name field to be the value of this name being passed into this method right but pretty quickly it's obvious that we have a problem here right the problem is that the field for the name of the dog in our class is called name but the parameter that we have being passed in is also called name as it is right now both of these names that we have here are referring to this name parameter being passed in so all this is doing is just setting this name variable to itself. So right now this method does nothing at all to actually set this name field on the object. So how do we go about telling Java that we want to set this name field to have the value of this name parameter being passed in? Well, that's where the this keyword comes in. We can use this.name to specify to Java that we are referring to the field on the object that this method was called on. And you can do the same thing when you create your getters. So a getter for name could look like public string get name. No parameters need to be passed in. It'll just return this dot name. Since there's no conflicting variable that has the exact same name, we don't technically have to use the this keyword here. If we got rid of it, of course, there's no other name this could possibly be referring to in this method other than this field. But it's often good practice to go ahead and use it anyway, just for clarity. So now we can go and create a dog. We'll call it my dog, set it equal to new dog. Then we can take my dog and call set name and pass in Kramer. Then we can go ahead and print it out, my dog dot get name, just to prove that it's now being set correctly, and it is, we get Kramer. So when we're calling the set name method on the my dog object, inside that set name method, this is referring to the my dog dog object that the set name method was called on. So if I'm inside a method in the dog class, this will refer to the exact dog object that that method we're inside was called on. So if I call my dog dot set name inside the set name method, this refers to the my dog object itself. So this is just saying take the my dog object and set its name to be the value of the name variable being passed in. And it doesn't just have to be getters and setters. You can use this in any non-static method and you can also use it in constructors in a similar way. Let's say I wanted to make a new constructor public dog and I want it to be able to take in the string name and the int age right here in the constructor so I can set them immediately on the object. I would just want to do the same thing I did here in the setter method. I just say this dot name equals name and this.age equals age. So it works exactly the same way it did in the setter method. This.name and this.age refer to the name and age fields on the actual dog object that's being created inside this constructor. And we set their values using the name and age parameters being passed in. By the way, if you're a little bit hazy on constructors, check out this other video I've got that goes into a deep dive all about constructors. It'll clear up all of your questions. So you can use this in any constructor to refer to the object being created, or in any non-static method to refer to the object that that method was called on. However, notice I said any non-static method. Using this is not allowed in any static method. Let's say I made a public static void print stuff. Inside of this method, if I try to do something like this.name, I'm going to get an error that says cannot use this in a static context. And that makes sense, right? The whole point of a static method is that they can be used outside the context of any particular object of that class. 
you can call a static method like this on the class itself without needing any particular object. And since this refers to the object that this method would be called on, using it in a static method just doesn't make any sense, so it's not allowed. The other way that the this keyword can be used in Java is inside constructor methods to call other constructor methods. That sounds kind of weird, right? Why would you want to do that? So here's an example. So we've already created this dog constructor that takes in a name and an age so that you're able to create a new dog with a specific name and an age that you can specify. But what if we wanted to create another constructor that takes no arguments at all and just creates a new dog object with some default values for the name and age? So we could say public dog takes no parameters. Right now, if we just leave this empty, it would create a new dog object, but it wouldn't set its name or its age. But what we can do from here is call this other constructor and just give it default values for the name and the age. And to call that other constructor, that's where we use the this keyword. We just say this and then pass in the values that we want to use for name and age. So a default name for a dog could be Fido, and maybe we can default its age to zero. So when you use the this keyword followed by a parenthesis, Java knows that you're invoking a constructor. And it knows the exact constructor that you're calling just based on the types of the variables that you pass in. So because you're passing in a string and an int, Java knows to call this constructor here that takes in a string and an int. So now back here in our code where we're creating a brand new dog just with this basic no args constructor, if we don't set a name at all, let's get rid of this set name line, it will give us the default name of Fido. And what happened is it called the no args constructor, which used the this keyword to call this other constructor with the name of Fido and the age of zero. So often people will use this kind of pattern to have one constructor that takes in a whole bunch of custom values if you want to use it, and then have other constructors with fewer parameters or even no parameters, and then uses the this keyword to call the other constructors with certain default values. Now, if you ever use this to call another constructor, your this call has to be the very first statement in your constructor. You're not even allowed to do something like system.out.println. Hi, mom. If your this constructor call is not the very first line in the constructor that you're creating, you will get an error. You're not allowed to have this call anywhere else. You can't use this call in any other methods besides a constructor, and it always has to be the very first statement that you make inside your constructor. The basic reason for that is that the this call to the other constructor actually creates the object. And Java doesn't want you to have any other code that might try to use that object before it's created. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. Don't stop now. Go ahead and check out one of these other videos to keep on learning. See you next time.